So we're going to demonstrate how to get the Obspot auto tracking camera set up properly as a webcam. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on the camera and check our connections. Uh, the first connection <clears throat> is going to be this very, very long USB wire. Um, if it's the correct wire, you'll find that it actually goes all the way to the wall and it's connected up through the ceiling over here to the camera. This is the only camera that has to be turned on separately. All of the other cameras we have, like the Logitech webcams, uh, automatically turn on when they're connected by USB. This one's different. <clears throat> you notice we have two different color cables. The white cable should be plugged into a fast charging electrical cord. The bottom one here, the white one, and that's our power cable. There's a little electric symbol there. And the top one is our data cable. The data cable can't get tangled up in things. Uh, right now, the way it's set up here is probably fine because if this rotates and it gets tangled up, then the rotating won't work anymore. But it's got a little bit of slack, it's probably fine. So, data should be plugged in firmly, this should be plugged in firmly. If nobody's moved the camera recently, the connections are probably fine. Now, what we need to do is turn it on and see this red button in between our two wires. If I just tap it and press it on like that, nothing happens. You have to press and hold the power button. And I'm keeping my eye on the other side of the camera. And when I see this turn on, then I know I've successfully turned on the camera. Now it's moving around because it's looking for someone to pay attention to. And so I can just sort of force this thing to pay attention to me. And once it sees a person, <coughs> it'll automatically start tracking them. Now I can give you some instructions on which gestures to use to control the camera a little bit. But one of the things we're going to want to do <clears throat> is go into our mobile app to uh, try to get like the exact positioning of the camera we want. But first, gestures. If the camera starts following you around in an annoying way, one of the things you can do is you can use uh, the stop, the lock gesture. Uh, and the way all of the gestures work with the, uh, uh, the Obsbot is <clears throat> you have to hold up your hand next to your head and gesture like this. And so the two main gestures we use are the follow, uh, the like track me, don't track me, and lock and unlock, okay? So it's the same gesture. So when I made the little peace sign, uh, I locked the camera. Now, I may have locked it and unlocked it, so I'll see what happens if I walk over here. The camera is slowly tracking me. Okay, so that means I locked it, but then I unlocked it. So I'm gonna make the bunny ears, I'm gonna make the peace sign again, and we're gonna lock the camera in position like this. So, if your hand is up high enough, the gesture will work, and the beep indicates uh, that it's worked. And I can move away from the camera now, and it's not tracking me this time, I've locked the position in place. Okay? All right, so now, <clears throat> before we get the camera set up on the computer, what we're going to do is we're going to use a mobile app to connect directly to the camera, and we can actually use the mobile app like a joystick, okay? So that's what we're gonna try to do. So in order for this to work, you need to be running the app on your phone, Android or iPhone, doesn't matter, called Obsbot Studio, okay? Now, if you've connected to the camera before, you're not gonna need to save the Wi-Fi password uh, for the camera. <clears throat> um, but if it's your first time, then you're gonna have to actually connect to the camera, which is broadcasting Wi-Fi. It's a Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth, it's a Wi-Fi uh, device. And we're gonna connect to the camera the same way that you would connect to a Wi-Fi network. So I'm gonna tap on the camera, and I'm gonna try, I'm gonna ignore that message. It says connect with the camera's Wi-Fi. And so what I'll do is I'll try to go, it says connect with the device's Wi-Fi. I press the circle. And it doesn't take me to the screen on my phone that I want. Um, what I want actually is to be able to go to my Wi-Fi networks. <clears throat> and you can see I'm connected to AltoNet right now and I'm gonna have to disconnect from the internet. And what I'm doing is I'm looking in my devices here for this one here, whoops. This one, the uh, Obsbot tail, okay? So it looks just like a Wi-Fi network. This is broadcasting its own Wi-Fi. And so when I connect, um, Four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Okay, that's right. So the numbers, the password is just the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, of course, we have no internet connection because this device, while it is broadcasting Wi Fi, it's not an internet device. Okay? <clears throat> but now, when we return to the, uh, the app, let's go back to the Observat Studio app. Here it is. Okay, so when we hit our circle button again, uh, use the location. Yeah, sure, why, why not? What the heck? <clears throat> okay, so now when we hit the circle button here, it's going to take us to basically our joystick interface. We've got to turn our phone sideways, and we'll show you a couple of the useful features. Now, remember, we've locked. So we can see from this icon here, the gimbal's locked. If I press it again, if I press this little button again, then what's gonna happen is the camera's gonna start moving freely and it's going to try to catch whatever human it sees and start tracking that person. Um, let me show you though, the way to just, in the locked position, move the camera the way you want. And so I'm gonna just press and hold the screen, doesn't matter where you press, and I'm gonna, I want the camera to point up, so I'm gonna press and hold the screen, and I'm just gonna very slowly move my thumb up, and now I wanna maybe rotate uh, you know, this direction, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll press the screen, and I'll just sort of move my thumb a little bit. The faster you move your thumb, the faster the camera will move, and sometimes it can be tricky to move it as slowly as you want to, to really get the positioning you want. Now, nobody is so tall, they go all the way up to the ceiling, so let's move the camera down a little bit, maybe and maybe over to the left a little bit because teachers usually stand over here near the lectern. Okay, that's probably good positioning. And I can move around the room and I can follow myself here and see how I appear from the view of the camera. Now, probably a little bit of zoom might be nice. Maybe I can just slightly adjust it a little bit. A little bit of zoom might be nice. So I can open up the zoom settings. Some of you have similar things on your uh, camera phone or whatever. The annoying thing about the zoom is you can't really zoom in real time. You have to select a setting and then wait for the camera to sort of catch up to you. Now this may be good enough. I think we'll get a good view at a 1.2 zoom. Um, and the annoying thing about this camera though is you probably will have to go into these zoom settings every single time. Now uh, there's another setting that's good. And so on the bottom left, we're gonna change tracking speed to lazy. What we found in our tests before is that when you track at a normal speed, uh, it can get a little dizzying and the camera wiggles a little bit too much. But when you slow down the tracking speed, things will work well. Now, sometimes teachers will, you know, wave their hands around and accidentally unlock the camera while they're teaching, and that's fine. It actually might look better if we go ahead and unlock the camera, which I can do now. And you can see it's already started moving, and if I wanna double tap myself, I become the camera's target. And so even if I move around, it's going to follow me, right? It's not gonna follow anyone else who might be in the frame. I can walk around this way, and the camera does continue to track me rather than anyone else who might be in the frame. Okay, but if I wanna lock the position, I can. And then remember though, if it's locked, we then have to move it manually back into position, which can be a little hard because most of us move our fingers a little too quickly in order to get things positioned well, but you just give it a gentle touch. Okay, so that's enough demonstrating of this. You see, once we get the camera in position, we don't have to use the mobile app anymore. So I'm gonna put the phone down. Uh, we don't need it anymore. And we're gonna go over to the computer now, and we're gonna get the camera feed coming in th uh, to OBS Studio, <clears throat> which you'll remember is the software that we use to feed directly into Big Blue Button. Okay, so the camera's on, we know it's broadcasting something, but is it properly connected to the computer? Hopefully, when I open OBS Studio, right away, I'll be able to see that we're broadcasting the camera. Now, unfortunately, <clears throat> this camera cannot be controlled as a joystick from this software. Um, so there's nothing I can do on the computer to move the positioning of the camera if I want to do that. Um, remember, I can use my gestures to control the camera directly, and I can use the mobile app to control the position of the camera like a joystick, but I can't actually do any of that controlling from over here. Um, it did work well. Let's just say you open up OBS Studio and instead of getting the camera like we see here, 
we get something blank. Well, again, this software is not that complicated. One of the things I can do is I can hit the plus sign or I can hit this video feed, which I've already called OBSBOT. And with the plus sign, one of the things you can do is you can add a new captured device. Okay, well, when I add the OBSBOT, I like to give it a unique name so I could distinguish it from other um, cameras. I'll just call this one OBSBOT2. And the UVC camera is already broadcasting over here, so I can't actually see it. Um, you can't add the same camera twice. Now, what I could do is I could add uh, this camera feed if I really wanted to for some reason. And so now I've got uh, a rather interesting video feed. I've got the, let's see here, I can broadcast in 720, that's pretty good. Um, this would be a rather unusual video feed. I could actually broadcast myself um, in front of the computer and then myself over uh, in the camera at the same time. So I will tell it to track me and I will bring it over here. I've unlocked the camera now, it's following me. Okay, and so I could have like a weird split screen view. This is some of the stuff that you can do with OBS Studio um, when you've got more than one camera feed. Now we're probably not gonna do anything that fancy. Um, you can if you want to. Uh, instead of this video uh, screen here showing my webcam, um, I can actually put in um, a screen share. I could open up an application and broadcast directly from that. So you can do a lot of cool things with this software. Uh, most of it we don't need. Um, whoops, I deleted. So let me just show you how I would add OBSBOT if you get a blank screen. Uh, and then we'll end our test. So we're gonna add a video capture device. We will call it OBSBOT again. And UVC camera, that means it's the one connected by a USB video device, a video camera. Um, and our default settings are good, so we're just gonna hit okay. Um, we could mess with the resolution if we want to. Probably the resolution is gonna be HD already, which is what we want. And the problem is our logo disappeared. Our logo is there, but you can see in the sources list, Whatever's on top is going to be the top layer, kind of like in Photoshop. So if you ever do have a problem, you lose your camera connection or OBS Studio stops running properly, uh, you can just follow the steps I showed you here. You hit plus, you add that video feed in. I like to give it a name that identifies what it is, but the logo of course should be on top. So we're gonna just pull, drag that up so that our logo appears, a slightly transparent logo appears. Um, uh, on top of our source list. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Remember, when you're loading up Big Blue Button, you probably don't wanna have this software open. I could load up Big Blue Button, start the OBS uh, virtual camera, and once that's running, I can just click on OBS Studio again, and it should open up right away and see the video feed that we want. Okay, but remember, we've got that in another video. Um, you should all already know how to do that. Okay.